Lucas McNaughton. You don't know who that guy is, right? He was the number three defender for Nashville SC that played last night. He started, played horrifically, by the way, and literally almost ended Messi's career. This had me so upset, and this is going to be the first talking point of this video. The way that Lucas went into that tackle, studs up straight into Messi's leg, that's a career-ending tackle. The fact that VAR never interfered, the fact that there was no foul, there was no card on the field, nothing was done to penalize that is beyond me. I'm one who defends the referees. I am a referee myself. I, I support referees. I support everything that's going on with, you know, MLS and pro. But this has nothing to do with that. This is CONCACAF. This is Champions League. Th these are FIFA referees. These are proper FIFA referees. What is going... What was happening last night? And then the Canadian defender goes to Messi and tries to like help him up and Messi basically tells him to fuck off, excuse the language, but I'm actually really upset about this call. Messi's getting treatment on the sideline. He keeps talking to the ref. He's like, nah, nah, nothing like, and then he starts laughing because it's, it's truly laughable. The fact that nothing was done. Redondo early in the match, Redondo just elbowed some some guy uh, it's like it, he literally elbowed the player only got a yellow card on the field as a miami fan that's a red card that wasn't used as a tool that he used his elbow as a weapon to get in front of the ball Comple like he comp it, it it genuinely the the officiating last night was so questionable literally suarez and messi were just about to fight the entire defense they were a good was talking smack that number three, Lucas or whatever, was talking smack. Literally, the entire Nashville team was talking smack for no apparent reason. But Nashville are so bad. They are a bad team. We should not have given them just that opportunity to even get into the game. The fact that they got two goals really early on in each half was just honestly pure luck in the first half well i'm just i'm moving too quickly let's break it down let's break it down so yeah i wanted to get that off my chest first straight away I, that's pretty much one of the main talking points that happened last night but let's get into the game let's go over the goals and we'll talk about some of the key players that stood out this is the starting lineup we're gonna put it up right here there is no jordi alba no yedlin obviously so at left back we have noah allen at the right back we had grusso we had five defenders we had sergi freire and aviles in those center back spots left center mid we had gomez Sergio Busquets, and then Federico Redondo making his debut for the club. Uh, and then up top, it was Luis Suarez and Messi. So just a couple changes to the squad, uh, changes to the formation. I mean, that's pretty much what happens when you get rid of two players right before CONCACAF Champions League with no replacements, except for Redondo. But we have no replacement for Yedlin. Honestly, I genuinely questioned the decision of selling or trading Yedlin at the time that he did. I'm I'm all for that. I'm all for getting rid of uh, like getting rid of Yedlin and bringing somebody better. But we can't get rid of Yedlin if nobody's coming in. If that makes sense. The opening goal was from Nashville in the third minute. Schollerbeck, however you say his name, number 14, found the space. Literally, Inter Miami's defense were wide open. In our defense, we were pressing a lot in the opening minutes of the game. We were trying to get up that field. We were trying to find an early goal. Russell was like pretty much playing right wing and yeah it, it just caught the defense all out of whack transitioning back which is not the first time that i've said this was a problem that we were getting caught out of transition especially with sergi at the center back position aviles can sometimes just feel lost in that defense so yeah that's how the opening goal came the defense is still too slow in my opinion we were pressing well i liked how we were pressing i liked how gomez looked in that first half noah allen did do well to get forward but when it came to that final moment of putting the ball in, it was just always, it was never good. It was never good. And you could see the frustration from Messi when you look at certain clips. Messi's getting upset of how no, of Noah's delivery because Noah's doing well to get up. He's getting up there and he's getting the ball. He's getting in the right place. But then when it comes to that, the, the final cross, it's not good. He always puts a cross forward and like near the goalkeeper and it's always either saved or goes out of bounds instead of cutting back to where Messi would be. And that's where Jordi Alba comes in because Jordi, in, if that was Jordi Alba, if Jordi Alba played tonight, he was finding Messi all day long. But for some reason, it didn't seem like Noah Allen was able to find Messi at the edge of the area because it was either Messi or somebody else would just be waiting there. But instead, he would look to Suarez or the back post or something crazy. He, he's done that every single time. I don't. There was never a time in the game, and he's maybe had four or five chances, 
where Noah Allen would just run down the left flank and just, just whip it in or just put it near post. So hopefully he can improve that on his game. And I think if he does that, he'll be fine because literally Jordi, if Jordi Alba doesn't play, we're going to need Allen. So we're going to need Noah to step it up just a little bit, just make some improvements some minor adjustments. I think just by learning from Alba, he should be doing quite well, but we're just going to have to see for next time. Let's just cut to the second half because that's where all the action happens. Obviously, in the opening minute of the half, Nashville will just make it 2 nothing up. An absolute banger. Honestly, I can't take anything away from that goal. We were just caught sleeping outside the box, curled with the right foot. It's two nothing. I mean, what you can't be upset at that. You can only be upset at Miami just by not not being more aware, not being more awake. They weren't ready. They were taking it easy. They were trying to calm down. But that's not the sort of game that it was. The game was like this. The game had to be more upbeat, more pressure. After that goal, though, Nashville were kind of quiet. Nashville had no opportunities to score. They had very few opportunities. But the amount of times that they've gone up to their side of the field and got in front of goal they made it worth their while Messi got the equalizer 53rd minute you could say outside the box curler and that's just what Messi does honestly we had he had like three or four defenders in front of him finesses it around them literally like playing FIFA good for them good passing from Suarez Miami got one back and it was time to keep that pressure up literally every single inner Miami's heart sank in the 83rd minute where Nashville got a third. It was just a good bit of play. I think it was Moore or whatever his name was. And it was the right back. It was the, the right back literally was able to just like dribble past like two defenders and just score and, and score and just put it right there. How can you allow that to happen? We got insanely lucky with the offside. He was just barely offside. But like, I think like his toe was just slightly ahead. We're just very fortunate that that wasn't 3-1. I think two minutes left. We were in stoppage time. There were seven minutes of stoppage time added. We were in like the 94th, 95th minute. And Sunderland, Sunderland passes it to Busquets. Busquets crosses the ball. Suarez is there to, to finish it. 2-2 equalized in the dying minutes of the game. Oh, I got so happy when he scored that. I, I was jumping out of my couch. I'm going to be honest with you. Suarez is literally a poacher. I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but basically his job is to score goals. He's not going to create chances. He's barely going to make any runs. He's going to sit by the defensive line, wait for the ball to get to his feet, and score. He'll make a slight run, maybe. He's going to wait until either a cross comes in and it's and it's placed right on his head, or the ball is at his feet and he's right in front of goal and he's going to look to shoot. That's his job. He's not going to create chances. He's not messy. He's 30, like seven years old. He has no pace. He barely has any stamina. He's just going to stand there. And his only thought is to shoot. And so that is how Inner Miami need to approach that. If they're going to start Suarez, they're going to have to expect him not to just constantly be running around looking to make like these plays. Pass the ball to Suarez and you're in the box. He has to shoot and he's, he should score. Expect nothing else from Suarez. Nobody should be expecting anything else from Suarez. He is a poacher. He is a number nine and that's going to be the only thing that he does. If that's not a striker that you want, get someone younger. I don't know. Get someone else. Federer Let's talk about his debut just a little bit. He did okay. He could have done better, but it was his first game with the club. He was kind of thrown in there. I, I think his first training session was like two days ago, to be honest. And so, yeah, it was like his second or third time with the team, his first game. I hated, I absolutely hated how high he was getting up the field. I thought he was going to be like Busquets. I'm pretty much thought he was just going to be there for defensive support. It's really weird to see him so high up the field. I was talking to my dad, literally, of comparing Redondo to his dad, which you shouldn't really make those comparisons. But if your dad... Is Fernando Redondo, Real Madrid, Milan, Argentinian legend. Want to make those comparisons because that's the guy that you're learning from, essentially. And now that you're learning from Busquets, you would expect him to play like them. I don't know. He was just really high. In my opinion, Redondo had to move back. Gomez should have been playing that far high. Hopefully he does better in the next game. Um, hopefully they can figure that situation out of where his role is on the field. He was playing kind of, I guess, like kind of like a box to box because he was getting up and down. He was moving up. He was like playing cam at some point. Then he was playing right back. So he was getting up and down the field a lot. And I don't know. I don't know how, how, how I feel about it because Busquets really plays at that defensive role. I just didn't like him up in the attack. 
I didn't like him up there. I don't know. I don't know why. I liked him when he rotated out, when Gressel pushed up, and he kind of replaced him in that right back spot. I liked that. I liked how he kind of just stayed in that midfield and kind of controlled the ball when they were coming out uh, from the defense. But we'll see what happens with the tactics. I don't know if Teth is going to stick with that or if he's going to slightly adjust. Um, what do you guys think? What do you think Redondo's ro like proper role is in this Inter Miami squad? What do you think he could play? Did you like him playing up top, like kind of like as a cam? Me personally. Also, by the way, like I said earlier, he should have got sent off. 100%. Any kind of elbow like that is just... I know not every elbow or not every arm to the face is a red card. And for those of you who are new to soccer or those of you who know soccer and just don't know that, yeah, not every arm to the face or hands to the face is a red card. But in this specific instance, Redondo used his elbow as a weapon. You can literally see like him go like this but it happened pretty early in the game i don't know if i'm going to be able to find a clip of him elbowing that player but if i do I'll, I'll put it in the video also in the midfield i liked how gomez was making runs forward he was really trying to find the space i really liked that so i really liked that from gomez i didn't think he played bad busquets i thought played really well as well he obviously got that assist I think defensively he was okay, but yeah, no, I think I summed up the defense pretty well in the beginning. I didn't like it. I don't like the combination of Sergi and Aviles. I don't like Sergi even starting, honestly. I mean, I, I just feel like he's a, he's a solid defender. I think he's a good defender, but he's just not quick enough. I think Freire did well. We needed a sub pretty early in the game. Nashville used all their subs. I think by the 80th minute, all five substitutes were used. And in the 80th minute, we used one, and it was David Ruiz. I thought I thought Robert Taylor should have got in at some point in that game. I don't know what Tata was doing. I'm sure he had a good reason why he didn't play Taylor at all. Have a game on Sunday. Just a couple days later, we play in that second leg at home again. So back-to-back -back home games. It's going to be difficult. We don't have depth. We, 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 we don't have depth. We don't have the quality on the bench either. So I'm uh, not saying that these players from the second team are bad, but they're, they're just young. They're young. They're not reliable. They don't have the MLS experience. We need Karimashi Bag, I think, badly. Robbie Robinson, honestly, would be a great help. And we can just pretty much rotate the players. I don't know. I would love all of our injuries to just heal pretty quickly we need our injured players back we need more depth but yeah i think overall i think we did well in the situation that was given we lost malta we lost yedlin malta was a good rotation player yedlin was pretty much the only natural right back we had i'm happy with the draw i definitely didn't think we should have lost that game nashville are not a good team guys i'm telling you nashville are not a good team people say that this is the derby this is the classico no bro no Nashville are bad. Nashville are a bad team. They don't have any good players. They have Sh the Schaffelberg. Schaffelberg is their best player. They have Schaffelberg, Z Zimmerman, and Mukhtar. And those are, those are the three main players that they have. Mukhtar, Mukhtar wasn't playing. I honestly didn't even realize Mukhtar was playing until 30 minutes into the game. Zimmerman, American International, that it, th those are the only three players that stand out in Nashville. Other than that, they don't have good players. That number three that almost ended Messi's career left so many gaps in that defense so many times. He was pretty much man-marking Suarez, and he just completely left his zone. There was so much space in between that defense. It was insane. You, if you look back, you'll see it. But yeah, man of the match of the game uh, has to go to Nashville's sh shoulder back. Like I said, I, I've, I've wrote an article. I don't know if you guys read. I don't know if anybody reads anymore, but I upload articles. I, I, I write articles about Inter Miami and I put, I post them on Substack. There was a, there was a paragraph in the article where I said that literally Nashville are not a threat. We shouldn't have to worry about them. They, all they have is Mukhtar and shoulder back or Schaffelberg, whatever his name is, man. You know what I'm talking about. Schaffelberg. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching the CONCACAF Champions League round of 16. First leg, that is a mouthful. Match review, Nashville versus Inter Miami. I think a tie is a fair result, honestly. Hopefully on Wednesday, we can bring it back. Th by the way, just to remind everybody, away goals matter in this competition. If we tie next game, we're fine. As long as we we have the away goal advantage. We score two goals away. We have the away goal advantage. We, if we tie 1-1, one, one, we're fine. So we just have to make sure that we don't lose. Yeah, we have Montreal this Sunday. I honestly think we should be beating them. They aren't a good team either. Uh, I would say we should be winning 
2 nothing. I think that's my prediction for the game against Montreal. So yeah, they play March 10th, 5 p.m. Make sure you tune in for that. Apple TV, 2 nothing is my prediction for in Miami. And I'm just I'm just waiting for this next CONCACAF Champions League game. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you agree, disagree. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you guys in the next video.